In this podcast, we will look at Venn diagrams. Uh, within Venn diagrams, more, we'll more specifically look at set notation. We'll also discuss mutually exclusive events. And we'll practice drawing Venn diagrams. So a warm-up, which is review. St. Louis Park and Hopkins are tied, and time has run out of the game. However, Abdi is at the free throw line, and he has two shots to make. He makes 62% of its as, uh, the free throw shots that he attempts. The shots are independent. Each one has the same probability. Make a true diagram of the situation. All right. So here's his first shot. Two things can happen. He can um, make the shot. We'll do black if he makes the shot. He can miss the shot. We'll do red if he misses. Then he gets a second shot no matter what. So if you're green, will be our second shot here. And again, he can either make the shot or he can miss the shot. Okay, so then let's do probabilities. So he makes 62% of all shots. I'm going to put that along the branches. 62. And if he makes 62%, if we take 100 minus 62, we get 38. So he misses 38% of his shots, so 0.38. Okay, and then we know to multiply along the branches for the different probabilities of each happening. So the probability that he makes it and makes it is 0.3844, and you multiply them together. The probability that he makes and misses, multiply those, we get 0 0.2356. And 0.2356. And the probability that he misses both is, if you multiply that together, 0 0.1444. All right, label everything. So this is when he makes both. Make them purple. Makes both. Makes, misses. Makes a shot. Oh, misses, makes. And this is misses both. And if you add them up, they add to 100% here. Okay, so what's the probability he misses both shots? You can write it as a decimal. I'll change it to a percent. So misses both shots, 14.44%. The probability that he makes both shots, 38.44%. The probability that he makes at least one of the shots, this could be a complement. You could do 1 minus the 0.1444, or we can add up these three right here that he makes both or makes at least one. So add them up or do the complement 1 minus that. Either way, you should get 85.56% um, that he makes at least one of the shots, so both are one, and that's the same probability that they win the game, because if he makes one or both, they win the game. So quick review of tree diagrams and probability. Today we're going to look at set notation and Venn diagrams. Venn diagrams, a set. In math, a set is a collection of items or numbers. We often use Venn diagrams to organize sets. So here, in this Venn diagram, you have two sets, A and B. Um, the numbers in set 1 are 6, 1, 5, 3, 4, and 7. And notice the curly brackets for set notation. In set B, we have the numbers 4, 7, 8, 9, and 2 are in set B. Again, notice the curly brackets here. That's set notation. Uh, within set notation, we find different parts of the Venn diagram. So one of them is called an intersection. An intersection refers to the numbers that are, are in both of the sets, or in all of the sets. So I call this and, intersections and. They're in both sets, in both circles, so it's right here. And there's notation, so A and B. Here's the and symbol. It looks kind of like an A right there, an upside down union A, so A and B. Okay, so if I say, uh, what's an A and B? That set notation would be 4 and 7. All right, a union means or. What's in one set or the other set or both? So it refers to the numbers that appear in any of the sets, any and all of the sets. All right, so it's in one or the other or both. In one or the other or both. Okay, and here's the notation A or B. It's the upside down U. So and looks more like an A right here, whereas or looks like a U, A or B. And again, we use the curly notation, and it's one or the other or both. It's all the numbers. So we got 6, 1, 5, 3, 4, 7, 8, 9, 2. All right, so 
all of these numbers are in A or B. A or B are the both. All right, a complement, we talked about complement. So there's a few symbol, symbols for this. So in not an A or A complement. There's another symbol that's used, like an IB cell. We should practice using that one. So A or the prime, A complement. All right, so A complement is not an A. So again, here's the symbol. And it's, um, if you think about one minus, well, it's in set A. So not in A is the complement. All right, so A complement is, let's see, 3, 9, 4, 7, 6, and 2. All right, so all these numbers right here are not in A. Let's do another complement one. What if I put not in A or B, so um, I think I could write it like this. So we have A or B, but it's the complement. So what's not in A or B? And that would just be these numbers on the outside, so 3, 9, and 4. So complement this dash or the C or the tilde, not an A. So let's practice with set notation. All right, what's an A and C? So again, this means and. So and means they have to be in both. So A and C would be 5 and 6. So that's not a great curly bracket. So 5 and 6 are an A and B. Okay, how about A or C? Let's switch colors here. So one or the other, or both, so it would be one, four, five, six, seven, and three. Okay, how about in A and B and C, so and meaning has to be in all of them. All right, so where do they all overlap? Oh, that would be right here, it would be six. Okay, how about not in C, so again, you might see that, you might see that, you might see that, not in C. So that would be 1, 4, 9, 2, and 8. So all of those are not in C. How about A and B? So again, and means it has to be in both. And again, that's 6. 6 is in C as well, but it's also in A and B. How about A or B or C? would be everything but the eight, it looks like. So it's in one or the other, or the other, or all of them. So everything except eight. So if I write that down in order, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, not eight, but there's a nine. All right, so or is in one or the other, or all. It's in everything, but eight is not in any of those sets. Okay. Now we look at mutually exclusive. The events to the left are mutually exclusive. What does it mean if they are mutually exclusive? So if you take a look, we have ninth graders, we have 10th graders. Mutually exclusive means it can't be in both sets. So both can't happen at the same time. So both can't happen at the same time. Can you think of two, uh, two events or events that are mutually exclusive? What cannot happen at the same time? So, for example, you can't be a dog and you can't be a cat at the same time. <coughs> you can't be asleep, you can't be awake at the same time, and so on. All right, drawing a Venn diagram, 30 students were asked if they have a cat or a dog. 20 students have a dog, 15 students have a cat. 60% of those that have a cat also have a dog. Draw a Venn diagram. All right, I'm going to underline the important information here. Draw a Venn diagram. So this one is not mutually exclusive. You can have a dog and you can have a cat. So I'll do D for dog, C for cat. Whenever you have overlap, start in the middle right here. So we have 60% of those that have a dog also have a cat. So I'm going to do 0. 0.6 times the students that have a dog, 20. 60% of 20, and that is 12. So there are 12 students that have a dog and a cat. Now let's work backwards because... 20 students total have a dog, so if we do 20 minus 12, um, we will get 8 students. And now in the whole dog circle, there are 20. 8 just have a dog, and 12 have a dog and a cat. And then let's do the, switch colors here. 
the cats, 15 students have a cat, 12 are already here, so 15 minus 12, you have three students that just have a cat. Now add those together, 8 plus 12 plus uh, 3, so if we add that together, um, that's 23, and there's 30 students total, so then we have to take our 30 minus the students that are in the Venn diagram, 23, so there's 7 that don't have either a cat or a duck. So now, lastly, let's look at that Venn diagram and finding probability. Find the probability um, that they have a dog. So P means probability, D means that they have a dog, and that would be 8 out of, oh no, not 8. It would be, add the whole dog circle, 20 out of 30, which is 2 thirds, whoops, 2 thirds, or if I round, it's about 67% that they have a dog. How about a dog or a cat? So dog or a cat means a dog or a cat or both. And so we know that was 23. So this is 23 out of 30. Leave that as a fraction. If I change it to a percent, it's 0.76 repeating. So I'll round that to about 77% chance they have a dog or a cat. What's the probability they have a dog and a cat? So again, this is or. This is and. Looks more like an A than the other one. Uh, and means both of them, so that's the 12, the overlapping area out of 30. Again, you can change it to decimal or percent, so that is 40%. These are approximate. Okay, so we've looked at a bunch of things here. We've looked at drawing a Venn diagram. Again, start in the middle. We've looked at mutually exclusive. They can't happen at the same time. We looked at set notation. And also, these fancy words, complement, union, and intersection. So practice that. We'll review more tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs>